Hi, I grew up in the Midwest and during the summer, I would go outside every morning and play with the neighborhood kids. We'd break apart about noon and we'd all go home to our respective houses and have lunch. And then the afternoons in my house were designated as quiet time. So I would curl up on the couch with my pile of books that I um, picked up at the library that week and read the afternoons away. Then I would tally the books that I read on my chart that we hung on the refrigerator. When I got back to school in the fall, those of us who had read a certain number of books got a pizza party or an ice cream party. Hi, I'm Pam Lamp. I write a blog called Who I Met Today, where I feature people, interview people who do interesting things that I want to learn more about. I'd love you to follow along. I also love to talk about books. I love to read books and I write a monthly post for 60 and Me recommending some of the books that I've read and enjoyed. Today I have five picks and I hope that I find something for every, or I hope everyone finds something in this list to enjoy. The first one is called The Wedding Dress Circle. And this is another World War II book. <clears throat> some of you might have had your fill of historical fiction for a little bit. And I was ready to give World War II a break, but uh, a publisher sent me an early copy of this and I read the description and I just had to read it. It was yet another one of those stories about the war that I knew nothing about. In England, Nazi boats were bombing the shipping lanes and so ships could not get goods into the area. And one of the things that they, they couldn't get in was fabric. The fabric that England did produce on their own had to go to the war effort. Um, regular citizens could not get a hold of new elastic or metal for fasteners or um, silk. In fact, silk it was illegal to use silk for anything but a parachute. So in the book, um, again, historical fiction, three women joined together with the village sewing circle and repurpose, recycle, reuse clothing. They also collect wedding dresses because the only um, wedding dresses that could be made were, were made from kind of a, a muslin-like material, which is not very glamorous or elegant. And um, they collected wedding dresses for women in the military and women at home to have a special dress on their wedding day. Word got out and Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of the president of the United States, was so impressed with this campaign that US people started shipping wedding dresses over to England also. I just loved this book. It was one of my favorites that I've read recently. And um, if you read it, I'd love you to comment or let me know what you thought of it too. The next book is for those of you who enjoy psychological thrillers. It's called Goodnight Beautiful by Amy Malloy. And this didn't sound like my style of book when I read the description, but someone I trust said, just, just try it. I think you might like it. And I'm glad that I did. Dr. Sam Statler is a handsome therapist and he and his fairly new wife um, moved from New York City to a small town in upstate New York so that he can be closer to his mom who is ailing in a medical facility there. And he is surrounded by a great life, a beautiful wife, and planning on inheriting a boatload of money someday. He takes, his office is in a building and the landlord lives upstairs and listens to Sam's counseling sessions through a vent in the floor. I've written a little bit more about this book in the, in the write-up below, but the creepiness kind of begins at that point. And this book had a lot of twists and twir turns that I did not see coming. So um, I, I think that, that's a great read for a summer afternoon when you um, just want to escape. The next one, is called The Favor, and that's written by Nora Murphy. Um, many women that we know, you know, we see them in church or around town or at the grocery store, just seem to have it all together. They always look great, their kids are well behaved, their husbands are successful, and their life just looks shiny and bright. But we don't know what goes on behind closed doors, and a lot of these women are trapped. Um, what we don't know is that they're very successful, well-respected, handsome husbands are controlling. 
And this tells the story of two women, Leah and McKenney. They lead parallel lives, don't know each other. Um, they're trapped in this um, domestic situation, can't leave because of the threats that their husbands impose. And so they take matters into their own hands. Book number four, Cover Story by Susan Rigetti. I think that con artist stories are kind of having a moment right now. There seem to be a lot of them out there and this one falls into that genre. Very quick paced, um, uh, will keep you, keep you turning the pages and you, it's the kind of book that I had trouble putting down. If you've watched Inventing Anna, I, which I had, it's on Netflix show based on truth actually, I thought this book was very similar. Um, I think you're almost better if you haven't read Inventing Anna and you read this book. It's about Laura. She's an NYU student who's struggling. She lands her dream summer job. She's an intern at Elle magazine. She meets Kat, a contributing writer who's also um, an heiress to a fortune. Somehow, Kat convinces Laura, the student, to drop out of school, move into her swanky hotel suite with her, and ghostwrite a novel. What could go wrong? <laughs> I would um, also like to say that the ending caught me off guard and I didn't understand it. I had to have a friend explain the ending to me and then I wanted to go back and read the whole book again. Um, she said that a lot of people had asked her about the ending. So if you read the book and you can't figure out the ending, give me a shout and I'll help you out with that. Again, cover story by Susan Rigetti. And then the last book that I have for you this month is called What's So Funny? A Cartoonist Memoir by David Cypress. And for fans of the New Yorker magazine, David is a cart staff cartoonist. I had the um, privilege of interviewing him. The story is on my blog, a very nice man. He's about 70. And it's a, the book is a story of his upbringing in the west side of New York, interspersed with lots of family photos and lots of his cartoons. His dad, um, it, David is very witty. It's a humorous tale. His dad is a meticulous, um, respected jeweler in New York who cannot even imagine the idea of someone making their living by drawing cartoons. He just wants none of it. And his mom just kind of goes along with his dad and tries to keep him happy. So David tells the tale of his upbringing and how he began to write cartoons. He told me that um, for 25 years, he was published in just about everything you could imagine, but he couldn't crack the tower on the hill, which was the New Yorker. Finally, around age 50, they accepted one of his cartoons and then um, he went on to become a staff member and since have pu the New Yorkers published about 700 of his cartoons. So a very likable guy and a very likable story. So those are the five. I'd love for you to comment um, either here or on the Facebook page as to what you're reading, what you recommend, if you've read any of these books. Um, the 60 and Me community is where I get some of my, my best book ideas for reading and I appreciate it. I'd also love to have you follow along on my blog and subscribe. So happy reading and um, I hope you enjoy your summer.